Micro compacts, well, let me zoom in a little bit, have become all the rage for a number of reasons. They're not always the most fun to shoot. Lakeline LC has released this barrel with a port on it and also a little bit longer. I want to take a look at this coming up next on GB. Those who have been with the channel for a while remember that when we first got our GX4 in, we actually had a bad barrel. The chamber fit was a little rough and caused some issues with the gun. Got a new one in that fixed things. If you've been with the channel even longer than that, you may recall that years ago, like 2015, maybe 2016, I had issues with another Taurus. And at the time, Taurus's customer service didn't care. <laughs> they they uh, wanted me to pay about a quarter of the gun's value to ship the thing in, to have them take a look at it and maybe fix it. I didn't want to do that and for less than the cost of shipping, Lakeland LLC had a replacement part that was actually an upgrade. So ordered from them, got it in, gun ran great from there on for the next four or five years until I sold the thing at the beginning of this last gun crisis. Uh, I took some guns that I no longer needed into the shop so that there would be inventory for folks who needed guns. Now, like Lynn LLC, who's continued to provide uh, all kinds of interesting products for Taurus and a few other gun makers, has this spiral fluted, rather good looking stainless barrel with a port on it. So what we're going to do is just take a look real quick at this thing up close so that you have a look and feel at how it compares to the factory barrel. And then we'll go to the range and see how it performs with different loads to our trademark what's for dinner test as well as some accuracy testing and get an opinion as to whether or not this port really helps control some of the muzzle flip that micro compacts are known for. Looking at the barrel profile, uh, you can see that the barrel hood retains most of the same design and shape, just with some weight savings on it compared to the Taurus factory barrel. And of course those spiral flutes can help with a little bit of weight savings as well as cooling. Do you need that on a micro compact? No, but it looks good and it's nice to have. Now that you've seen how this thing lines up in comparison with the factory barrel, we'll do a chamber fitment test real quick using our Nosler match as always, and then we'll get out to as the range. All barrels, what we're looking for with chamber fitment is we want to see how the round drops in there. Does it have a good nice plunk as it lands in there? And then look to see how much support there is. I am noticing, I guess it's on the Taurus barrel too, a nice little camphor around there to help aid in feeding. And the feed ramps appear to be about the same. Fits in nice. And got enough room in there to allow some variances. You can hear that rattle in there. That's great because not all ammo is as perfect as this stuff is. As far as chamber support, you can see it's not quite fully supported. There's a little bit of opening underneath at the feed ramp there just as there is on the factory barrel. What that tells me is we shouldn't have any feeding or cycling issues with this barrel in comparison to the factory barrel. Essentially, if the factory barrel ran it, this should run it. Let's get out to the range and test that. See how accurately we can shoot with this thing and if that port makes it necessary. Difference. Well, most of these micro compacts are a bit flippy in the hand, a little bit snappy. The GX4 is probably one of the more controllable of the guns out there. I'm curious, does this port make a difference? So what we're gonna do is, I'm just gonna do some cold shots on a piece of steel at about 20 yards, get a feel for it. And then, since it is a new barrel, that might affect what it eats. So we'll run a what's for dinner test through it, take a look at how it prints on paper, and give you a general feel for, is a port of barrel worth it? So. First off, those cold shots on the torso. That felt pretty flat. You guys tell me, you're able to watch it. I'm using PMC Bronze 115 grain, so a standard load, maybe even a soft load, but I'm seeing plenty of smoke come up vertical in front of me and the gun's staying really flat. I think this port works. 
<laughs> Coming up, we'll do our what's for dinner test, take a look at groups, and then I'll give you concluding thoughts on the new ported GX4 barrel by myself today. Lake so Lake we're gonna have to film this a little bit differently. I'm gonna run through the 10 different loads, then we'll take a look at the target. Target is at seven yards, as always, using a normal testing target. First load is from Norma. This is the range and training 65 grain frangible. It's a pointy bullet. You've seen it in a lot of our other what's for dinner tests. Chambered. Didn't group so great with that, but our second load is Cycled. from Federal. This is their 70 grain uh, lead-free ball ammo. It's got a short and stubby little profile. That seemed to feed nicely. Circle number two. Having to fight the flinch there. Uh, not used to shooting these small guns. No cycling Load issues. Load three is the Hornady Critical Defense Light. This is a 100 grain, very short and triangular looking bullet. It looks more like a 380 than a nine mil. No cycling issues. Callaway Ballistics 115 grain TMJ. Just a standard load. Fed very nicely. Certainly snappy, and I'm starting to remember how the GX4 bites my knuckle. We've got Red Army Standards 115 grain ball. This is a steel cased load. Remember, steel has different friction in the chamber. This chamber was nice and pretty when it started off, but it got dirty quick. Actually quite controllable and nice shooting with this ported barrel. Starting to see a little bit of flame mark on the top of the barrel there. <laughs> Verifying that there are hot gases exiting out that Circle hole. six is the Federal HST 124 grain nickel plated brass hollow point bullet. Make sure that I'm keeping the gun still in frame while I'm shooting here. I threw the first shot, but the second two stacked. You'll see that at the end. Our next one is going to be the Remington UMC with lead less, 124 grain. This has an interesting profile to it in that it's snubby. Looks almost like they just chopped the end of the bullet off, except that the uh, brass, or the uh, copper rather, covers most of the end of the bullet and kind of wraps it around the lead. Fed well from slide lock. Oh, this is a softer shooting. Very soft shooting, no cycling issues. So far, I'd say it looks like Lake Line has once again done their homework and produced a good barrel. Next, we have ZQI 124 grain this is a nickel plated steel case, brass jacketed. Interesting round, tends to feel more like NATO pressure. Pretty hot stuff. Excellent feeding on this barrel. No cycling issues. Number nine, a Winchester Silver Tip 147 grain jacketed hollow point. These are usually not fun to shoot, especially in a small gun. Will the port help tame it? Maybe. I hope it's coming through on camera. I can tell you what I'm feeling is that the gun is staying very flat in hand. There's still, of course, snap and pop and more recoil because it's a smaller, lighter gun, but it's a uh, it's not getting the same whip or snap that you tend to get from these whipper snappers. Circle number nine. It's 
actually not bad. It's still got the authority to it for sure. But uh, yeah, it stayed impressively flat. I think uh, the 147 might be the way to go on these, which depending on the load, might be what you need in a short barrel to uh, help make up for that lost velocity that you get out of these little guys. Speaking of lost velocity, just as a point of silliness, you know we always like to go crazy heavy. 165 grain. This is the Stealth from Ammo Inc. Which we have courtesy of True Shot Gun Club. So if you're looking for any of this stuff, it's really good in a suppressor. Isn't gonna run in this barrel. Very fat, heavy bullet. Chamber from slide lock is fine. Mash that one. Very soft shooting though. Man, I uh, gonna say honestly, I didn't think the barrel was gonna make this big of a difference, but uh, this is now easily one of the most controllable micro compacts that uh, I've shot just by swapping out the barrel. As far as how everything printed, let's take a look. If you remember the order that they were shot in, up top, uh, circle one, we had the Norma 65 grain, and then the Federal 70 grain, which went a little wild, I think might be too light for this barrel. Then we come down to our Hornady Critical Defense Light, which all stayed in the circle there, and our groups tightened up as we move to the 115 grains. Threw a couple, but also had some doubles. These are just shooter errors. That one for sure. And then there's our last group there. So it, uh, overall, the barrel did not seem to have any struggle with any of these oddball loads. Now I'll try group and five shots for accuracy and uh, we'll see. Unfortunately, the ammo crunch has hit us, especially when it comes to match ammo. So I'm just gonna use some PMC bronze 115 grain on that left circle square. Zoomed you in because we're seven yards away. Let's see how this will print for us if I can do my part and control the gun. Not bad, definitely through the first one. I'll own that, not afraid to. But overall, I'd say the Lake Line ported barrel is certainly an upgrade for the GX4. It makes this shoot more like a four inch barreled gun. It was a lot more controllable. Um, I can certainly feel the difference between different loads as you always do on uh, smaller guns but it just kept things flatter. And as you can see, that port certainly got some heat through it. And that's about how far it sticks out from the barrel. Does not interfere with any holster that has an open end or a little bit of extra space there. If you've got a GX4 and you're looking to make it a little more controllable, a little more carry happy, friendly, um, I'd suggest looking into this Lakeline LLC barrel. This was an impressive change. Thanks for watching.